This is chapter 8, the chapter on statistics. We're in hands-on exercise number 3. We're continuing with the assessment file. And in this hands-on exercise, we're going to learn how to load, we're going to learn how to load the analysis tool pack add-in. We're going to perform an analysis of variance. We're going to calculate a covariance. We're going to create a histogram. And I'll show you how to run summary statistics and some of the descriptive statistics like mean, median, and mode, and all of that using the analysis tool pack. So let's go over it. And we loaded um, the solver add-in and the analysis tool pack when we did chapter 6. But let's just do a review of what we did. We went to the file menu, and we went to the options. And then we clicked on add-ins and go. And then we checked the boxes for analysis tool pack and solver add-in and clicked OK. And those appeared in the data tab on the right where it says analysis. So we have both solver and data analysis. This is the analysis tool pack. Let's just click on that to see what we can do. There's a lot of different functionality. We can do a single factor ANOVA, two factor ANOVAs, correlations, covariances, descriptive statistics, which we'll talk about, F tests, histograms, random numbers, uh, regression, rank, and percentile, t-tests, and z-tests. So all of your basic statistical functions can be found in this analysis tool pack. So it is very handy. All right, let's go to performing an analysis of variance. Um, we are on, um, we're going to use the same uh, sample high school tests. So let's come over here to our high school samples worksheet. If we look at what we have, um, we have 50 data points from three different schools. And we're looking at their SAT scores. The SAT scores out of 2,400, uh, 800 on each of three parts. And again, we have three schools. And we're looking at a sample of students from each of these three schools and 50 from each school. And actually, what we're going to try to do with this analysis of variance is compare the means of the three schools and say whether they're statistically different from each other. So if one school produced statistically significantly higher test scores than another, that might say the quality of that school is better. Now, the numbers are going to be different. So one school is going to produce higher test scores than the other two. But are they statistically significantly different? Unless they are, then we can't make the assertion that one school is better than the other based on their SAT scores. So let's perform this analysis of variance to see if, th if the three schools are indeed different statistically on their test scores. So we'll go to the Data tab and the Data Analysis Tool Pack. And we're going to do the one-factor, single-factor ANOVA. And we'll hit OK. And it says, what is your input range? Do you have labels in the first row? And what's your output range? We're just going to work with um, the data itself. So we're going to, well, we, we can work with, let's do labels in the first row. Our input range will be SAT high school 1 through 3. So my range is going to be B3 through D53, labels in the first row, alpha at 0 0.05. We'll talk about that in a second. And our output range. It's going to be cell F7 of this worksheet. Oops. So I made, I made a mistake there. Let me put output range F7. Oops, F7. And our input range is B3 through D53. OK? And we'll hit OK. And here's what we get. Let's make sure we can read every one of these columns. And we pretty well can. So as we anticipated, um, the means are different. Here are the means of the three schools. High school 1 has a mean of 1756. High school 2 has a mean of 1879. And high school 3 has a mean of 1827. But are they statistically different from each other? Uh, is the statistical significance uh, there? And what we found is, it's not really there. So if we had a p-value that was beneath our alpha, our alpha was 0 0.05, 
If the p-value equaled 0 0.05 or below, then we could say there's differences in the means of the three schools. This p-value is greater than the alpha value of 0 0.05, so what we would ascertain and what we would say if we were writing this up is that while the means do appear to be different in high school number two has um, test score average that's well above high school number one, they are not statistically different from each other. We cannot make the assertion that high school two is better than high school one on SAT scores. Okay, so that's the single factor analysis of variance. Let's move on. We're going to do a covariance next and we're going to work with the combined score samples spreadsheet. Okay, so let's look at what we've got here. This time, instead of separating them out by school, we have all 150 students grouped together. Okay, they have their random student IDs, their SAT scores, and the number of absences. So, let's go to the data analysis tab. We'll go to the data tab, data analysis, and we're doing a covariance here. And click OK. Our input range is C3 through D153. Okay. We're grouped in columns, so that's okay. We do have labels in the first row. And our output range, make sure the cursor is in the output range, is going to be H3. So we'll put it right there. So our covariance table is going to be placed in H3. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And it now has produced a covariance table between the number of absences and the SAT scores. All right, we've done covariance in case you need to do that for one of your statistics classes. The final thing that we're going to do is um, we're going to create a histogram. Now after the histogram I'll show you descriptive statistics, but the final thing that the book covers is the histogram. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the data tab, data analysis tool pack, and we're going to click on histogram. We'll hit OK. Our input range is D4 through D153. We're talking about the number of absences. Okay. And we're going to hold this constant or absolute. So D4 through D50, D153. Our bin range are those three numbers in the bin range, F4 through F6. So here's our, it's basically running a frequency table like we did earlier in chapter 8. Okay? Uh, we're not going to use labels here. Alright, and our output range, and put your cursor in the output range box, is going to be uh, H8. Now very important to this problem is we want it to produce a chart output. The chart is the histogram itself, otherwise we've just run a frequency table. So let's do chart output, make sure that is checked, and we hit OK. And here's what we have. We get a frequency table, OK? So it's just like what we did before. 12 students out of the 150 are absent zero times. 57 students out of the 150 are absent between one and five times. 81 of the 150 are absent between six and 10 times. And here is a picture, a graph, or a histogram of, this, of those frequencies. Okay, so it shows you a picture of how many students were absent in each one of these frequencies. And that's your histogram. So we want to move this to uh, the appropriate area. We'll do as the book says and put it in H15. Okay, that is um, what the book has covered. Let's do one thing. Let's go to the high school. Um, yeah, let's just go to the high school samples. No, we'll do test scores. Okay, let's go to the test scores worksheet. Okay, and I'll show you very quickly um, some of these summary statistics. So let's go to, and you'll do this on the homework. Data, data analysis. Let's do descriptive statistics. Okay. Our input range, all we're going to do is the test scores. All right. So we're going to do the test scores. All right. And if we wanted to, we could include um, 
C3. I'm going to go ahead and include C3, which is our label. And then I'm going to indicate that we have a label in the first row. Let's put our output range um, just right here. L4 is fine. I'm going to go into the output range box and click on L4. And I want you to click on the box for summary statistics. That's what we're doing here. And it's going to give us all the descriptives of this particular column, which is test scores. So I run that, and here's what we get. We have a mean test score of 517.24, a standard error, a median, a mode, a standard deviation, a variance, okay, all the things that we kind of did right here, plus we have a range, a minimum, a maximum, a sum, and a count, all by running those descriptive statistics and then by clicking on the box for summary statistics. So since you're going to do this on your homework, I wanted to show you in this hands-on exercise. This will be very handy for the future. We are done with chapter 8 on statistics, and this was hands-on exercise number 3.